Nestled deep in the rugged hills of southern Italy lies the ancient monastery of St. Agatha. Its stone walls, weathered by centuries, hold dark secrets that the outside world has long forgotten. The townsfolk in the nearest village speak of the monastery only in whispers, warning travelers to stay far away. But for Sister Mary Catherine, an American nun on a mission of faith, the call to St. Agatha's was one she could not ignore. Sister Mary Catherine arrived at the monastery on a bleak, rainy afternoon. The air was thick with foreboding as she approached the massive wooden gates. She knocked, and the sound echoed ominously. After a long moment, the gates creaked open, revealing a stooped elderly nun with piercing eyes. Welcome to St. Agatha's, sister, the nun said, her voice gravelly. I am Sister Beatrice. Come, we've been expecting you. As Mary Catherine entered, she felt an unsettling chill. The courtyard was overgrown with weeds, and the stone statues of saints seemed to watch her with hollow eyes. She was led to her quarters, a small, sparsely furnished room with a single window overlooking the desolate grounds. That night, Mary Catherine struggled to sleep. Whispers floated through the cold air and shadows danced across the walls. She clutched her rosary, praying for peace, but the sense of dread only grew stronger. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream pierced the silence, followed by the sound of hurried footsteps and muffled voices. She rushed to her door and peeked out, seeing only fleeting shadows and the flicker of candlelight down the corridor. Her heart pounded as she cautiously followed the sounds to the chapel. There, she found the other nuns gathered around the altar, their faces pale and eyes wide with terror. On the floor lay the body of a stranger, his eyes wide open in a frozen expression of horror, his throat slashed and chest carved with symbols Mary Catherine did not recognize. In the following days, Mary Catherine discovered that this was not the first time such an atrocity had occurred. Whispers among the nuns spoke of many travelers who had met grisly ends within the walls of St. Agatha's. The monastery's history was stained with blood, and the nuns seemed resigned to their fate. Determined to uncover the truth, Mary Catherine began to explore the forbidden areas of the monastery. In the library, she found ancient tomes filled with dark rituals and accounts of demonic possessions. She learned that the monastery was built on the ruins of a pagan temple, and the dark forces that once resided there had never truly left. One stormy night, Mary Catherine ventured into the catacombs beneath the monastery. The air was damp and fetid, and the walls were lined with the bones of long-dead monks and nuns. Her flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows. She heard faint chanting, and as she turned a corner, she stumbled upon a hidden chamber. In the center of the chamber was a stone altar, stained with blood. Around it stood robed figures, their faces hidden by hoods. They chanted in an ancient, guttural language, and Mary Catherine felt a wave of nausea and fear. She watched in horror as they performed a ritual, sacrificing a baby and smearing its blood on the altar. The chanting grew louder and the air crackled with dark energy. Suddenly, the robed figures turned towards her, their eyes glowing with an unnatural light. She fled, her heart racing, but the shadow seemed to reach out, trying to pull her back. Mary Catherine knew she had to escape the monastery, but she couldn't leave without exposing the evil that lurked within. She confronted Sister Beatrice, demanding answers. You should have left well enough alone, Sister Beatrice hissed, her eyes cold and devoid of mercy. St. Agatha's is not a place for the righteous, it is a sanctuary for the damned. She revealed that the nuns had been performing dark rituals for centuries, sacrificing travelers to appease the malevolent spirits that haunted the monastery. Those who resisted were met with gruesome deaths, their souls trapped within the walls forever. Realizing her life was in danger, Mary Catherine tried to flee, but as she ran through the labyrinthine halls, the shadows seemed to come alive, blocking her path. She heard the whispers growing louder, mocking her, promising her doom. In a final, desperate bid for freedom, she reached the courtyard. But the gates were closed, and the nuns were closing in on her, their faces twisted with malevolent glee. She felt cold hands grab her, pulling her back into the darkness. As the nuns dragged her to the altar, she saw the ghostly figures of the monastery's victims, their hollow eyes filled with sorrow and pain. She struggled, but the nuns' grip was ironclad. With a final prayer on her lips, Mary Catherine was laid upon the altar. Sister Beatrice raised a ceremonial dagger, its blade glinting in the candlelight. You sought the truth, Sister Mary Catherine, she said, her voice echoing through the chamber. And now you will join the others in eternal torment. The blade descended, 
and Mary Catherine's scream echoed through the monastery. As her lifeblood stained the altar, the malevolent spirits rejoiced, and the whispers grew louder, celebrating their newest victim. The next morning, the townsfolk found the gates of St. Agatha's closed and locked. They knew better than to inquire about the fate of Sister Mary Catherine. The monastery stood silent and foreboding, its dark secrets buried within its ancient walls. But at night, if one listened closely, they could still hear the whispers of the hollow eyes echoing through the hills, forever haunting those who dared to listen. I'll never let you go.